Listen closely. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. If you have an interest in the Mafia, then the NCS is the place to be. In part one of Murder Most Foul, we took a look at the murder of Cesar Terranova. We also looked at the Corleonese family and their rise to the top of the Sicilian Mafia. No one could stand in the way of the Corleonese. Those that tried were dealt with efficiently and effectively. There was a time when the Corleonese preferred to exist in the shadows. There was also a time when the authorities were, allegedly, not Mafia targets, but under Leggio and then taken further by Toto the Beast Riena, all that changed. Although the authorities were, allegedly, not Mafia targets, over the years there were several high-profile murders of those working in the judiciary and law enforcement, and not only those who called the beautiful island of Sicily home. Way back in 1909, on March the 12th, Joseph Petrosino, a New York City police officer, was murdered. Joe was in Palermo under a false name to investigate the relationship between the Sicilian and American mafias. He was also there to gather intel from local police files. Not only was Joe one of the first Italians to become a police officer in America, he was the first police officer from America to be murdered whilst working overseas. Then, on May the 1st, 1947, bandit Salvatore Giuliano and his gang unceremoniously, but also allegedly, blasted a crowd with gunfire. The crowd had gathered to celebrate Labor Day. The shooting caused the death of 11 people and the wounding of 27 others in what became known as the Massacre of Portella della Ganestra. Giuliano was murdered on July the 5th, 1950 in Trapani. He'd been hunted by an estimated 2,000 police and soldiers. On February the 9th, 1954, in a prison in Palermo, the main witness, Gaspari Pichotta, who was also Giuliano's cousin and lieutenant, was murdered. He was given and drank a cup of coffee which had been poisoned. Although Giuliano and his gang were held legally responsible for the Porta della Ganestra massacre, there were some doubts about their role in the deaths. Children were also not safe, especially from the Corleonese, who may have operated in the shadows, but they were also ruthless killers. No more evidence than by the murder of 12-year-old Giuseppe Leticia, a boy working in the fields as a shepherd to guard the small family flock. His crime? Being an eyewitness to the kidnapping and killing of Placido Rizzotto, a trade union leader from Corleone who was kidnapped and murdered by Luciano Leggio on the 10th of March 1948. Giuseppe fainted on the spot and spent the night where he fell. The next day his father finds him. He wakes him up but as soon as Giuseppe opens his eyes he begins to utter apparently meaningless phrases. No, no, don't kill him. What has he done to you? Leave him alone. The father is convinced that he has a fever and is therefore delirious. He immediately takes him to the hospital in Corleone, whose medical director is, coincidentally, Michele Navarra, who, in addition to being the head of everything, was also a doctor. Giuseppe tells the doctors everything. A doctor from the hospital, Ignazio Dell'Aria, diagnosed Giuseppe with toxicosis, and he is given an injection, one that was deadly. On March the 13th, 1948, two days after the incident, the newspaper Lunita covered the incident on its front page. There is reason to think, and many in the village think so, that the child was involuntarily witnessing the killing of Risotto and that the threats and intimidation shocked him so much as to cause him a shock and as a consequence of it, the death. Officially, Giuseppe died of toxicosis, but it is believed that the syringe was full of poison especially since after the child's death, the doctor emigrated to Australia. On December 20th, 1962, an important new law approved by the Italian Parliament established the Parliamentary Commission of Inquiry into the Mafia in Sicily. Six days later on Boxing Day, the murder of Calcedonio di Pisa, head of the Delanocci family in Palermo, is followed by the First Mafia War. Over the preceding years, several other notable members of the judiciary, law enforcement, plus heads of trade unions and even journalists were taken out by the Mafia in Sicily. In the months and weeks prior to the murder in 1983 of Rocco Canici, there was a series of murders that included 
On the 26th of January, Magistrate Giacomo Montalto was killed in Trapani. On June 13th, Captain of the Carabinieri in Palermo, Mario Diario was murdered. This was followed less than two weeks later by the murder of public prosecutor Bruno Caccia on the 26th of June in Turin. Caccia was investigating mafia connections in northern Italy. Then, in Palermo, on June the 29th, came the murder of Rocco Canicci. Canicci was murdered alongside his protection team of Mario Ciapazzi and Giuseppe Portolotta. Building porter Stefano Lesaki was also killed. It was Canicci's idea to establish a group for within the magistrate's office to solely take on the Mafia. The anti-Mafia pool, which later included Falcone and Borsellino, was created. Not long before he was murdered, Canicci gave an interview to the well-known newspaper La Silla, in which he said, The Mafia has always been reaction, preservation, defence and therefore accumulation of wealth. First, it was the few to be defended. Now it is the large public procurement, the most opulent markets, the smuggling that travelled the world and administered thousands of billions. The Mafia is therefore tragic, frenzied, cruel vocation to wealth. The Mafia itself is a way of doing politics through violence. So it is fatal that you seek complicity, a match, an alliance with pure politics, that is, practically with power. Genichi was an integral part in reviving inquiries into the Sicilian Mafia. He completely understood that in order to break down the code of a murder, the authorities had to bridge the gap which existed between the judiciary and the citizens of Sicily. At a time when judges steer clear of the word Mafia, Genichi spoke out against the Mafia through his position as head of the Education Office at the Court of Palermo. Rocco Genichi was assassinated by a car bomb. His Fiat 126 was packed with 75 kilos of explosives and detonated by Mafia assassin Pino Greco under orders from his uncle, Michele Greco. Michele Greco was subsequently sentenced to life for ordering the hit. Kenichi was succeeded as chief prosecutor by Antonio Campanetto. Campanetto retired in 1990 but carried on working in supporting social justice. In 1999, he organised the first legality meeting, an annual event that gathers journalists, magistrates and civil associations. They still hold the meetings to this day. Campanetto died from natural causes in 2002. Our next anti-mafia legend and hero to the people of Palermo is Giovanni Falcone. Falcone had been on the mafia's death list since the early 1980s when as a bankruptcy judge, he uncovered links to politicians and financial trails which both led back to the Sicilian Mafia. It was in 1979 that Falcone was selected by senior Palermo magistrate Canicci as one of his pool of prosecutors and judges. Falcone joined this select group shortly after the assassination of Boris Giuliano. Giuliano was head of Palermo's Squadra Volante, or Flying Squad. Giuliano, who was killed while investigating heroin trafficking and money laundering, was on the verge of a major breakthrough. However, his murder on July the 21st, 1979, was the beginning of a new era of violence from the Mafia. In a move similar to Terranova, Falcone left Palermo in 1987 to work in Italy with the Ministry of Justice. When Falcone was asked if he thought the threat to his life would be lifted, he replied he was under no illusions it would not be and described the Mafia as a panther with an elephantine memory. Giovanna Brusca, a member of the Sicilian Mafia, was responsible for the murder of Falcone on the 23rd of May 1992. Captured in 1996, Brusca was another who turned Pentito following his arrest. He stated he committed between 100 and 200 murders. Rina wanted the murder of Falcone carried out in Sicily as a public demonstration of Mafia power. Falcone once said, death is no more important to me than the button on my jacket. I'm a real Sicilian. 400 kilograms of explosives were placed in a culvert under the highway between Palermo International Airport and the city of Palermo. Brusca discharged the bomb by remote control from a small shack on a hill near to the highway. The explosion was so powerful it registered on the local Richter scale. 
57 days after his friend Giovanni Falcone was murdered, Paolo Borsellino, an Italian judge and prosecuting magistrate, was also killed. Neither Borsellino nor Falcone had originally intended to get involved in the struggle against the Mafia. They were assigned cases which involved the Mafia and ones that continued to expand. They become disturbed by what they discovered. Borsellino is considered to be one of the most important magistrates killed by the Sicilian Mafia and he is remembered as one of the main symbols of hope in the battle between the state and the Mafia. Both Borsellino and Falcone were named heroes of the last 60 years in the November 13th, 2006 edition of Time magazine. 47 people were convicted in connection with the murder of Borsellino, but the entire case was discredited by the revelations of Gaspari Spatuza. In June 2008, Spatuza began cooperating with authorities. He said he had become religious in prison, facing a choice between God and the Cosa Nostra, chose to cooperate and tell the truth. He admitted that he had been the one who had stolen the Fiat Cinquecento used to hide the car bomb that killed Borsellino. His admission contradicted those of a man with loose connections to the Mafia, who had once confessed to stealing the car. Spatuza also claimed that Silvio Berlusconi made a deal in 1993 with the Sicilian Mafia that put the country in the hands of Cosa Nostra. Borsellino had been assigned to investigate the murder of Emmanuel Basile, who was killed May 4, 1980. Basile was a captain of the Carabinieri, as well as a colleague of Borsellino. He was shot repeatedly in the back whilst he carried his four-year-old daughter in Monreal, Palermo. At the time of his death, Basile was working with Borsellino on murders linked to the Mafia in Corleone. Borsellino became a special target for the Mafia when he had signed the arrest warrant for Francesco Madonna on the charge of ordering the murder of Basile. On the November the 14th, 1992, Salvatore Riina and Francesco Madonna were sentenced to life imprisonment for Basile's murder. It was on the 19th of July, 1992, that Borsellino was killed by a car bomb in Via di Emilio near his mother's home in Palermo. The bomb attack also claimed the lives of five policemen. Agostino Catalano, Walter Casino, Vincenzo Limuli, Claudio Trainer, and Emanuela Loi, the first policewoman in Italy to be killed in action. The Maxi trial against the Mafia, which started in February 1986 and went on until December 1987, saw a total of 475 mafiosi indicted for a multitude of crimes relating to Mafia activities. Most were convicted and, to the surprise of many, the convictions were upheld after the final stage of appeal in January 1992. Another important element of the Maxi trial was that the existence of Cosa Nostra was finally judicially confirmed. Following the two murders of Falcone and Borsellino, the Italian government on the 25th of July 1992 sent 9,000 soldiers to Sicily. The operation was called Sicilian Vespers and was a significant security operation by the Italian Armed Forces that took place between the 25th of July 1992 and the 8th of July 1998. The name of the operation refers to the Sicilian Vespers, the 13th century successful rebellion against the rule of the Angevins. The operation was made necessary to support regular police forces in their fight against organised crime in Sicily, primarily targeting the Sicilian Mafia. After the initial deployment of 9,000 soldiers, over 150 officers and soldiers were involved during the six-year period of the operation. 